Welcome to 15 Minute Fundamentals, where we break down crypto projects and learn about the drivers behind the data you see on our charts. Today, I'm joined by Rahul from Connext, a cross-chain communication protocol. Hi, Rahul. Welcome to 15 Minute Fundamentals. It's great to have you on. Thank you so much for having me. Could you kick us off with just a quick intro to Connext for those not yet familiar? Yeah, sure. So um, Connext is an interoperability framework. So what we do is we provide tools for developers to build any type of uh, cross-chain interoperable interactions on top of Connect. So this includes uh, sending like tokens, sending value, as well as uh, passing trustless or trust minimized messages cross chains. Um, so we support any different type of EVN domain right now. Uh, so this includes any type of rollup, L1, L2, sidechain, whatever it is. If it talks EVM, we can support it. Eventually, we plan to go like non-EVM as well. But yeah, that's about it. Awesome. And, and just so we cover the basics, could you briefly describe what trust minimized communication or messaging is? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, trust minimized means in a nutshell that you, you know, minimize the amount of trust that you give like external actors. Uh, so in our case with interoperability, you know, when we've always looked at interoperability, we have thought from the lens of like the blockchains themselves are like a great tool because you, they are trust minimized. You know, the whole point of a blockchain is to be trust minimized. So when a lot of other people do interoperability or, you know, the easy way to do interoperability basically is to have like some sort of external set of actors that validate some actions on one chain and perform them on another chain. So that would be like a non-trust minimized approach because you're trusting this external set of actors. So then essentially like flips the entire model of blockchain trust from like trusting a blockchain to now trusting like this set of like bridge actors essentially. Because you know, when you're bridging funds, you're basically like entrusting everything to these actors. So that has always been like a real point of importance for us at Connext to uh, make sure that we always stay trust minimized and we use the chain for what it is for, which is trust minimization and uh, like validation of of any kind of different thing that you want to validate. Uh, a couple months back, you introduced the first network upgrade, uh, Amarok. Uh, could you quickly walk us through like the main updates that you introduced with that? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, just staying on this thing about trust minimization. Our first system was built in a trust minimized way using atomic swaps, which is essentially like a, a really good way to do things in like where you don't need to trust external actors. But the limitations around this are the fact that you can basically only send value and very like limited amounts of like call data for like permissionless unauthenticated calls, which is what we were doing. Uh, but we decided, you know, we wanted to kind of like go a layer deeper and really support developers who want to build cross-chain native applications. So in order to do that, we need to fully support like uh, smart contract based interactions from the get go. Um, so this means we need to like reduce the reliance on like any kind of like signature or EOA and allow a contract to plug directly in. Um, and basically have the interaction happen through like smart contract related actors and things like that. So basically move all the interactions on chain, I would say, is, is the main reason why we decided to move to this upgrade. Uh, we, of course, we still want to preserve all the properties that we have around trust minimization and things like that. Um, so the way that we can do this is by building sort of this like layered system on top of an optimistic protocol called Nomad uh, to basically resolve all the like the you know basically get us to to the final stage of where we want to get to where we have a full developer platform that supports all the use cases and kind of like reduces all the trade-offs associated with each individual piece as a whole got it great overview now moving over to the token terminal dashboard we can see that you're generating revenue of which uh, the entirety at the moment is going to your supply side participants so could you break this down for us on how fees are being generated and how this value flows through the protocol yeah so like you said you know the fees do go to the uh liquidity providers as a whole basically the only thing we have is we have a bridging fee so that's the liquidity providers in our system are routers they provide liquidity at the time of transfer to users that want to bridge from one chain to another chain, and they charge a fee for this. And the fee is a flat fee. 
and you know that's about it it's very simple that's the only fee in the system and that all of the fees go towards the liquidity providers exactly and, and as that's the case do you have any plans for some kind of protocol fee switch in the future is that a topic of discussion or how are you approaching that yeah that's a that's a great question uh the thing is so with connects we see connects as a public good so we want to build everything in a way where it's fully decentralized public good uh nobody is in control so what that means to us is it means there is not any kind of like protocol fee we just think like that kind of changes the the dynamics and the incentives around like you know, who is making the money in the system. And we want this to be at the type of system that will be around like forever, you know, not not like something that people will just like speculate on because they can make some protocol fees for staking tokens and things like that. But we see this being like, you know, the level of like Ethereum, where Ethereum is around forever. Ethereum passes all the value to its like miners and validators who run the network, same way that we pass all the, the revenue across to to the people that control and run the network. Got it. And how, how about like in the long run, think about economic sustainability of the system if you want it to be around forever. Do you have any thoughts of capturing value for either future token holders? We'll speak about the to upcoming token next or and anything related to that? Yeah, I think, you know, if we can provide a system where liquidity providers are able to come in, make sustainable revenue on top of just providing these services to secure the network, I think that is what aligns the incentives to make this like a full, fully decentralized, fully kind of self-sustaining system that is governed by the actors in the system who are the token holders. Sure. So you believe that you wouldn't need to have any sort of uh, fees accruing to the protocol for this to be sustainable in the long term? Yes. Currently at the moment, we, we don't think that that is what is going to cause the right incentives in our case. Okay. And now looking at like general drivers, I know at the peak monthly revenue, you're generating about over 75k uh, USD to supply side participants. And I know that is, of course, along with the broader market come down a bit, but I think you're holding up pretty well. So I'd love to hear about the current drivers or challenges related to your growth? Um, yeah, so that's a great question. Um, I would say looking at this chart, you know, it is kind of like a downward slope. And uh, yeah, some of this is related to the market downturn. I would say a lot of it also is related to the fact that we are fully focused, like you said, on shipping our network upgrade. So we have basically like stopped all of our growth catalysts on this current version ourselves. We have not like done any kind of outreach, not done any kind of like protocol outreach and integrations and marketing hype, whatever, all that kind of stuff that we were doing before to get our initial growth has kind of like tapered off towards supporting our new system. Got it. I'd love to hear who the main users of Connect are now. Is it is it retail people trading uh, or, or transferring liquidity between chains or, or do you see more institutional users? Yeah, that's another great question. So in like in our current system, it has been mostly retail. Like we do see like fairly uh, low transfer sizes, like, you know, low frequent transfer sizes. So, you know, it's between kind of like a, uh, I would say sort of tailored towards like long tail uh, more than other protocols. This is partly due to some of the designs of our system because we have liquidity providers who individually uh, each liquidity provider's capacity basically individually determines the max transfer size. So the max transfer sizes in this case are somewhat lower. Uh, with that said, you know, our new protocol kind of like flips all this on its end because we made it from the beginning that uh, transfers can be split across any amount of liquidity providers. So this will, uh, this will like just from the get go support like a huge amount of of liquidity and transfer sizes to be available from the get-go and also with that said uh we are kind of trying to like change the target market a bit so of course you know we will always have our bridge ui that that still acts and looks and feels the same however now we are able to support like smart contract interactions so now we're going to go to protocols DAOs, uh other dApps that are you know looking at building these like cross-chain deployments and kind of integrate cross-chain functionality into the dApp itself and so we think like the bridge ui itself is only going to be like a small piece of the overall total addressable market that we can capture okay cool you've announced the next token it's not live yet but i'd love to hear what its purpose will be and what's the current status yeah so you know 
like like I said before, Connext is looking at being a public good, public decentralized infrastructure. And from what we've seen, like, you know, so far we have seen that like a token to govern a protocol like this is the most effective way to kind of decentralize the actors and kind of like make a community run project. So that that's mainly what we're looking at. Uh, you know, we we think that this token w is is going to be used to incentivize uh, routers who are the liquidity providers in our system to behave properly. So there's going to be elements of like staking, slashing, things like that. Um, those are some of the things that we've kind of like finalized on. But, you know, in the end, it's going to be like left to the community and to the token holders to kind of decide how the protocol evolves. You touched upon like incentivizing via tokens. So you'll have some sort of token incentive mechanisms in place with the introduction of Next, correct? Uh, yes. Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Yeah, uh, there's there's nothing like finalized. So I'm not going to like say anything about that. But of course, you know, I think I think there will be like some need at some point to like incentivize liquidity provision and stuff. We don't like just the idea of like liquidity mining programs. I think, you know, they're not they're not sustainable at all. They're not like they're not something that that is really like a long term plan. So I think we're going to try to come up with better ideas to like uh, incentivize long term liquidity provision post just like, you know, inflating our token forever and ever. Got it. Uh, one thing I wanted to discuss with you, which um, has been a pretty interesting thing to follow. I know a while back um, there was quite some chat on crypto Twitter and elsewhere about the future of crypto being either multi-chain or cross-chain or where the balance will be and of course we had Vitalik chime in with his argument for why the future will be multi-chain but not cross-chain and as at the moment connects you're supporting cross-chain liquidity between EVM compatible chains so what you're building is something that Vitalik has basically given the green light for that this is good but in the beginning you mentioned that you're also looking to expand outside of um, EVM compatible chains and I just wanted to hear your thoughts on maybe his argument for why the future would not be cross-chain and how you're approaching solving that as Connext. Yeah, so that that is something like we've been thinking about and talking about a lot. So I think, you know, what Vitalik is referring to with this like multi-chain, he's referring to like, uh, we call it like a cluster where there's a cluster of chains that all have like very seamless interoperability between them. So you can think of like Ethereum and the roll-up ecosystem as this cluster where they have roll-up bridges to do like basically native uh, data and messaging and tr and to like asset transfers between them. You also have something like Cosmos, which is like its own little cluster of chains that communicates like very well using IBC, as well as like Polkadot as its own cluster, like Avalanche and its subnets, BSC and its like you know new side chains. So each of these like L1 ecosystems is kind of like forming its own little cluster. And I think Vitalik is saying that like within this cluster you have like you can do cross chain or like multi chain stuff very easily because like you know the trust assumptions are the same and whatnot. And I think he's absolutely correct in in the fact that like once you get outside of this, what hopping between clusters, you really change up what you're thinking about and what you're assuming about the trust of like the other chain because you know you're essentially like tying yourself to whatever. Uh, other ecosystem that you are bridging to and now you know you're you're relying on the backing and the security of this ecosystem when really you might want to only be relying on this so uh, with that said i think no matter what users are looking to get between these ecosystems they want decentralized solutions they want like non KYC centralized exchange based ways to get between these places and they will do it however they can. So like, you know, if Connect said, oh, we don't want to support this like cross chain future at all, we're only going to stick with like Ethereum ecosystem, then somebody else will be like, okay, well, I will come and do this in like a completely custodial way. And then people will still use it because they just want that. And like, that's what we've seen. So what we're seeing is like, people are going to do this either way. So we're just going to build the best possible tooling to make this happen in the most like seamless and uh, trust minimized way. Got it. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. To wrap it up, I'd love to hear what's next for Connext. So it'd be a breakdown of your roadmap for the next 12 months if there's something uh, on that that you haven't yet discussed in this session. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I think we're going to go all in on, first of all, shipping this protocol upgrade, scaling up liquidity, and then like finding these, these really novel like cross-chain native use cases. So 
like Connext is almost acting like an incubator right now. So we're uh, finding projects, you know, going to hackathons, otherwise in, like finding developers who really want to build these cross-chain native use cases. And we are uh, getting them to build on top of Connects. We're like providing them all the resources, support, and even like, you know, investments, funding, grants, et cetera. We have like a lot of people in our network that are interested in this. Um, so we want to kind of like build up these use cases and really like build up a future where like cross-chain native dApps are kind of like the norm. And like, you know, I would say like in the next like six to 12 months, we want to basically move away from like a bridge UI as being a thing. Like we want to like have these interactions directly be between within dApps and to the point where like they're almost like invisible from users themselves. So that's kind of how we see the future where like bridge UIs are not needed, kind of chain agnostic, chain, uh, like chain agnostic, chain cross chain native experiences are kind of the norm. Looking forward to seeing all that play out. And thank you so much, Rahul, for taking the time to do this session. It's a great overview of Connext. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me.